All right, everybody, welcome to today's video. We have the Pixel 6 Pro versus the iPhone 13 Pro. We never did this review, and we realized, and we thought better late than ever. We have been using both of these devices for the past six or seven months. We've done some cinematic cuts, we've used them for short films, we've done some other single phone reviews, but today we are putting these bad boys head to head to see which one you think looks better, both photos and video. Let's go, uh, let's go shoot some tests, huh? All right, I'm gonna call up my dog and see if I can, can get this on both phones. Ready? Paint, come here! <whistles> All right, here he comes, and I hit both photos. One, two, three. Those sound effects guarantee that the photo is better. All right, paint. Go back. If you can't bring a friend on these shoots, it's best just to bring your dog. All right, right here, we have a really big highlight on the water, so this is a good dynamic range test. Okay, really quick, Niles reporting from his computer screen. Looking at these two images, it's very clear the iPhone handles the highlights in the ocean a lot better, but I actually think how the Pixel handles the mountainside there is much more natural, so it's a trade-off. All right, so it's important to note what we're looking for in this review. We're not after the nitty gritty hardware specs of these phones. It's more just how the image looks and how we would use it for our filmmaking and for our photography. So we're looking at colors, we're looking at dynamic range, we're looking at overall image quality. Paint, come here. There's another dog down there. Come here. We're also gonna be looking at depth of field and stabilization, just basically anything that we would be conscious of when we're shooting a film or when we're taking photos. It's also important to note that these cameras are actually pretty different and what each excels in, the other most likely struggles in. Software-wise, they're both pretty different. And what I mean by them being different and their strengths being the other's weakness is that, for example, the iPhone 13 Pro has cinematic mode for video, the Pixel does not. But the Pixel has other photography features that the iPhone 13 Pro doesn't. Right now, if I had to choose, I would choose Pixel 6 Pro for photos, iPhone 13 Pro for video. Are you gonna carry around two phones with you all the time? No, and maybe you actually feel differently. And if so, roast me in the comments. Here's me getting really close to the iPhone. Kind of see, is it catching my face? How does it look? How does it sound? And now here's the Pixel, really up close. This is kind of getting into the minimum focus range. And how does it look? How does it sound? How does it look? How does it sound? Audio will be very different for both. We have a little crosswind. Here is my mic. Here is the iPhone. Here is the Pixel. Okay, one thing phones aren't great at is skin tones in direct sun. So this sun isn't super orange, but here we will do a quick test. I'll take my hat off. And basically, how does it look with the skin tones on my face? Is it too orange, too yellow, too plasticky looking? These are all the things we are concerned about. I'll back up a little bit. Look this way, look this way, look that way. Basically, skin tones are super important in filmmaking. It is a reason that you use a really expensive cinema camera is because of those yummy skin tones. And on phones, you're always up against the lack of depth of field as well as skin tones. All right, hopefully you guys are enjoying the video so far. I think these cameras are pretty comparable and honestly are both very good. You can't really go wrong with either. Um, but if you're new around here, we are Moment. We do a lot of videos around phones, around consumer level gear, and really just showing you how much you can get out of these cheaper cameras. When I say cheaper, I just mean not, you know, really expensive cinema cameras. So if you're new and this is your first time here, consider subscribing. All right, I'm gonna turn these cameras off before I go over these bumps. Okay, so now we are at a pretty popular surf beach called Sano. You'll probably see it as San Onofre, but if you come to San Clemente, just say Sano. It's kind of windy, so the waves aren't very good, but it should still make for some good images. Boom. Let's go. 
Okay, now that I'm able to look at these photos on my computer, I think it's important to call out some distinctions. The first being that the iPhone is much cooler while the Pixel is much warmer. I actually prefer the warmer images as in this environment, it just looks better and more pleasing. Here you can also see that the Pixel has way less contrast in the shadows. Pretty interesting. Now, if you're editing your photos, these slight color adjustments don't matter a ton, but generally, I find the colors out of the pixel slightly more pleasing, especially in that blue sky. And here, you can see that the warmer image just looks more flattering to the scene. When it comes to video, I think the iPhone renders colors better. Here you can see how the pixel is a little warm and you can see that the background is a little blown out. But with a little color adjusting, this is very easily fixable. But the question is, do you want to be doing all the editing and which colors do you actually like straight out of camera? Okay, right now we are gonna do a depth of field test. Now this is just basically the blur in your image between what you have in focus and what you don't. On this channel we do a lot of filmmaking and photography and we care more about how the image looks, how you're using these really cool pieces of tech versus the actual tech itself. So depth of field is something really important. So we're gonna see if there's a difference. Okay, here we have, I'm focusing on the lifeguard tower. Three, two, one, the one X. We'll go to the 3X and the 4X respectively. Focusing on the lifeguard tower. Seeing a lot of good bokeh on the pixel with that 4X. And then here's the 2X on the pixel just for good measure. Sweet, now let's switch to video. Now here I have a lot of elements in the foreground to create depth between the foreground, the midground, and the background. That's kind of how we're gonna show that bokeh is in these green plants, bushes, all right, now we'll go to 2X on the Pixel, 3X on the iPhone, and then 4X on the Pixel. All right. And then for the sake of it, I'm gonna zoom into 4X digitally on the iPhone. Right uh, there. So that's a digital 4X on the iPhone. Okay, the next thing I wanna shoot here, let's make sure audio is working. Check, 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 check. Okay, perfect. All right, the next thing I wanna test here is stabilization. The Pixel, hey! You know, he's great to have around, but he keeps chasing the birds. So with stabilization, what you wanna think about is the fact that the Google Pixel has four different modes while Apple has one. Now this is very Apple because the one they give you, they just kind of say it works for everything while Pixel is going to give you more options, but maybe you just like the standard and the other three might be a little gimmicky. So right now we are going to test the standard options in both devices. Click. Wow, what a good boy. Hey, come here. Go, 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 go. All right, I'm gonna flip, flip it back up. Hank, come here. Good boy. Keep going. So no gimbal, which phone is gonna look the best? All right, that's that filmmaker walk, go. All right, everybody, hope you enjoyed this video. Google actually just had their IO event where they announced the Pixel 7 and Pixel 7 Pro. We don't have a ton of details on those phones yet, but phone season is coming up and we are stoked to run around with some new devices this fall. But again, we had just kind of forgotten to do this video and these are the two cameras that I shoot with the most. I've had actually a ton of fun shooting on the Pixel and I think what it comes down to, the main two differences are that the Pixel is gonna be a little more punchy, a little more saturated, while the iPhone is a little more muted and a little more desaturated and a little more cool. Now, if you're editing your images, you might actually like the iPhone more because it's giving you more of a blank canvas to work off of, but if you don't want to edit your images, 
or video, then the pixel is already gonna give you almost a colored version that looks like something you could post. In my mind, those are just the main two differences in terms of color. That's what I care about the most, which you've probably caught on in this video so far. In my mind, like I said, I think pixel wins for photos. I think iPhone wins for video. And if there's a phone that can do both amazing photos and amazing video, then that's the phone I would probably choose. I do think what gives the Pixel the edge in general is just that 4X optical lens. There are some other phones that just came out like the Sony Xperia uh, latest device that has an 85 to 120 optical zoom. And as someone who likes zoom lenses, um, I'm excited about that. So thanks again for watching. Like and subscribe. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and we'll see you guys in the next one. Oh, also this was all in cinematic mode. So hopefully it looked good. Sweet. See ya.